movie Troll 2 came out in 1990. However, there are a couple things wrong with its title. One, there are no trolls in this movie. Two, this movie is not a continuation of the story from Troll. So why is this movie called Troll 2? Well, the movie certainly doesn't give an explanation for this. So let's start it anyway. We start off with a grandfather telling his grandson a lovely bedtime story about a man named Peter getting chased by some people in masks and burlap sacks. Evil goblins. Oh, go goblins, I mean. They're goblins. What did Peter do to the goblins? He called them trolls. To make a long story short, Peter gets tricked by a troll masquerading as a girl, as Grandpa Seth explains. These evil creatures can transform themselves into flesh and blood people. You said they can. You should have said they could. They can. They can! Goblins still exist. And guess what else? They turn Peter into some kind of human plant mush. Their favorite meal. Don't tell me they ate him, Grandpa. That's exactly what happened. Now have a fun time trying to go to sleep, you old bastard! With a voracity that has no equal on Earth. You think about that all night! What are you doing still up, Josh? Grandpa Seth was telling me to stop. Well, it seems Grandpa Seth is actually dead and comes to his grandson every night to scare the shit out of him. Mom gives Joshua a little rundown of how hard it's been for everyone to deal with Grandpa Seth's death. For your father, and for Holly, and for me, his daughter. Oh, Grandpa Seth was your father? I didn't hear all this time, I thought he was dead! Thanks for finally explaining it, Mom! Grandpa Seth has remained in all our hearts. That's sweet. But you must banish him from your mind. What the hell? So apparently Mom thinks instead of Josh dealing with his grandfather's death and trying to move beyond it, it's better if he just doesn't think about it. Maybe he's going to develop some kind of mental disorder in the future? Ah, well, he'll be out of the house by then, right? Do you know how many people live in Nilbog? Get it, no. goblin backwards! 26. So anyway, the family is apparently doing some kind of messed up house exchange with a family from Goblin Town. Michael? Yeah? Who are the goblins? The goblins? Well, they say insanity can run in the family, so I guess we know where Josh gets it now. What kind of idiotic joke is this? I think that's what every other movie asks this girl when she auditioned for a role. Oh, are you nuts? He trying to turn me into a homo? Wow. At least we have such likable characters to carry this movie. I like you. But my family doesn't like you. They say you're good for nothing, and they spend way too much time with your friends. I don't know what to go on about here. The, the stupidity of the way she's acting, or the idiocy of her line? What's wrong with having friends? Nothing, if you want to remain a virgin for life. Oh, so that's what friends are for, filling that void of when you aren't having sex. Elliot asks if he can go on the family trip as well and gets this response. Okay, I'll tell my father that you're coming with us tomorrow. I honestly thought she's being sarcastic with him the first time I watched this due to the way she's so disingenuous. However, when the family leaves without him, she starts pouting. Could have waited another 15 minutes. Elliot is a good for nothing. Joshua! Start singing. Come on, sing that song I like so much. I don't feel like singing, Mom. Just sing. Row, row, row your boat. Seems like they don't deal with any problems in this family. And I'm sure they're not going to deal with the problem when Josh starts having psychotic breaks every time he hears, row, row, row your boat. Merry, 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 merry life is buttery. Elliot is apparently on his way in his own camper, though. And he brought his friends. Josh continues his mental problems when he sees his grandfather hitchhiking to stop them. What are you doing here, Grandpa? So how about it? Are you going to give me a ride or not? They arrive in town to see no one around. It's normal. This is a farming community. Remember, at this time and not everybody goes to sleep. Night? Still looks pretty early out to me. I don't like this place. Can we go home? Don't listen to him. Lead the way, farmer. Wait. Ah! Okay. Enjoy your stay, Nilbon. <laughs> You'll enjoy our city. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, so these are the wonderful people you trust to stay in your house. Complete strangers who will barely say two words to you. They find the oddballs have left them a very green meal. Grandpa Seth shows up though to tell Josh... Don't let them eat. So he freezes time to give Josh time to... I must do it! Piss all over their food, of course! No, Daddy, please! Don't hit him, Michael! Cause I don't wanna do it! And you can't piss on hospitality! I won't allow it! One of the Elliot Brigade, Arnold, sees a girl running through the woods, so naturally, he tackles her. She apparently ate the turn you into a plant food, so then the goblins show up. I love that one with the eyes. He gives them a scolding, naturally, but they don't take to it. They go into what looks like a church, but apparently isn't. What kind of place is this? This is my house! The house of overacting! Just a tad. So anyway, this is... Credence Leonor Gugu of ancient druid origin. What was that? Who in the hell was that? Uh, yeah, whatever she said. So apparently there's no hospital in this town, so she brings them... Broth is miraculous. It contains sap from the forest. It is a concentration of all of the vegetal properties of the earth. Well, naturally... I promise I won't do it again. So the broth turns them into human plant mush. There, there must be a logical reason for all this. Shut up! Don't try to bring logic into this movie, you idiot! She is one with the vegetable world. Oh uh, yeah, looks like a great world to be a part of. And now, here it comes! A line you've all been waiting for! Ever seen eating like that? Sure. Where? Thanksgiving dinner with my in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> then we come back to Holly doing something. When? Joshua. Joshua. Looks like Holly's got that insanity gene as well. Are you still smoking dope, Holly? You promised you'd only take one trip this vacation! So Josh takes the room and then asks his grandfather why he appeared in the wrong room. I still have to learn the layout of this house. Oh, I hate when ghosts get these things mixed up. You have to convince them to leave here. Why don't you tell my mommy and daddy these things? They don't listen to me. Your mother has never taken my advice. Oh, and don't you hate when people still insist on giving you advice from beyond the grave? We don't call. So another one the Elliot crew, Drew, decides to go to the store and gets a ride from the sheriff. I'm Sheriff Gene Freak. Where do the girls from around here go at night? <laughs> Can I help you? Coffee. There's no coffee here in Nilbog. It's the devil's drink. Eggs. Eh. Bacon. Are you crazy, boy? Here's some Nilbog milk. Here is free. Free? Of course it's free. We love tourists here in Nilbog. Man, you'd think the people of Goblin Town would try a little bit to fool people that they're normal before they eat them. Back at Crazy House, we find out instead of turning into plant mush, Arnold is now a tree. Grandpa! Grandpa Seth, are you there? Good thing his dad can't hear him from all the way over there. Josh makes that amazing discovery. Grandpa spelled backwards! This is their kingdom! He acts like this is a new discovery despite his grandfather telling him that at the mirror. This is an evil place. It is the kingdom of the goblins. And somehow his dad's fallen asleep after those five seconds. Josh stumbles upon some troll sermon about the evils of eating meat. All oh, that stinking, disgusting meat. Apparently the only meat you should eat is human after it's been turned into some kind of 
human plant mush. Holly goes to Elliot with a reasonable ultimatum. Choose, Elliot. Either me or your friends. I don't understand. Oh. Well, that was a pretty reasonable reaction as well. Open your mouth, my little friend. Please, open it. I don't want to! Stop! What are you doing to my son? We were giving him some ice cream. I don't like this place. Not one bit. Mr. Miss Presence, what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be at my house. We had car trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the dad finds Holly talking to Elliot, and she's not the only one who thinks he has to leave his friends. You'll have to forget about your friends and come to our house. Otherwise, you forget about Holly. All right, I'm coming. Hey, wait a minute, Elliot. You're going to leave me here alone? Yes. Of course. It's easier for you to get killed on your own, stupid. Drew shows up and tries to drag Arnold out of Crazy House, but surprisingly enough, he doesn't make it. And Arnold gets turned into a nice green protein machine. What's going on here? Well, back at the crazy farm, they find out the ten has decided to throw a party at their house. Wow, isn't that nice? What are you doing here, Elliot? Mom, Elliot's part of the family now. Oh, wow. I guess they're getting married now that he's the perfect friendless man. I love cakes that have EAT UP written on them. Josh tries to make a little mirror call only to find... Grandpa Sass Mirror has been disconnected, but he decided to make the trip from the afterlife and he's brought explosives. Cut it out, kid. Preacher Man tries to send Gramps back to the afterlife, but he's got some amazing special effects of his own. Anyway, they put him out to reveal a troll, uh, sorry, a goblin. He was one of us, and you killed him. Now it's your turn. But not right now. We're going to let you slowly back into your house. We're going to get you. Later. There's sandwiches for tonight in here. It will go easier if you eat them. And I have no idea why it took us till nightfall to do nothing but throw a bag of sandwiches at the door. Credence now summons up her television channel powers so she can go eat the last of the Elliot friends. So thinking a woman that appears to him on TV, who is actually just outside his RV, is pretty normal, he invites her in, and they start making popcorn. I don't know. So while the family holds a seance to try and get old Sethy boy back, the goblins patiently wait outside. But when they get a hold of him, he teleports Josh to Credence's crazy house and leaves a nice goblin behind for the family to deal with. Grandpa Seth returns and starts bitch slapping the goblins to hell. He reveals that a stone from Stonehenge is the source of the goblin's power, and to stop it, they must only touch it. Touch it. Credence realizes they are touching their stone, so she yells and Our queen is calling us. Yep. Seth disappears and leaves Josh to be killed, but unfortunately... He pulls out a hamburger! And eating it disgusts them so much, he's able to get back to the stone and touch it, along with his family who conveniently shows up. And with their combined touching of the stone, they make some terrible lightning effects and destroy the trolls. I'm sorry, goblins. You are all weirdos! Upon returning home, though... Mommy! Do you want some, Joshua? Okay. But what happened to Brent? So I guess he survived. That's actually kind of surprising, but I guess no one really cared. No more. No more popcorn. Wow. Just wow. 
this movie's camp level is over 9,000. I'm not saying that. Who writes this crap? Oh, yeah, I do. Well, I'm still not saying it. Is that okay? As a matter of fact, it isn't. <laughs> video to say, hi, I'm Phelous. Oh, here's a song from Admin Phelous. It was a pain in the ass to make since I can't say his name the right way. But whatever, my friend, you rule Pendality. And what is wrong with that guy? They're eating her. I'm gonna go and eat me. They say insanity can run in a thin.